Hello everybody, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and the other day somebody had asked me that how do we choose a life partner, where do we find a life partner. So today I will give some authorized references from the Srimad Bhagavatam and I will try to explain that where do we need to go to find the life partner <laughs> and how do we find the life partner. Alright, so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your marriage or finding your life partner or your career or any health issue or anything else that is bothering you, then you can always go to my website and you can uh, book a reading with me. You will find the link to the website in the description of this video below. Alright, and because this video will be related to the Srimad Bhagavatam so today I must say that God is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him or else he will find you okay so many times people have these queries that oh should I, should I go on dating somebody should I go on shadi.com to find somebody should I go to there are some so many websites these days where you can meet the opposite sex and then maybe you finalize something so if that is the case then uh, why are there so, so much difficulties in relationships these days so that shows that there is something fundamentally wrong which everybody is missing because nowadays there are two categories of people either those people who are having happy relationships or either those people who are not having happy relationships now the first category who are having happy relationships even they are not happy overall they also tell me that oh i am very happy with my marriage but i don't know i'm not happy I, i'm happy about life in general i mean the marriage is good but i'm not happy about life in general i want this i want that it's like a never-ending quest today i want this car tomorrow i want that uh, two bhk then i want three bhk then i want a penthouse then i want a mansion now today i want mercedes tomorrow audi then bm bmw then oh my god it's going up 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 so that is showing that even if you are having a so called happy marriage it doesn't necessarily mean that you are internally happy if your spiritual needs are not taken care okay so now many times people ask these questions that oh which is good love marriage is good or arranged marriage is good and then they will always say oh you know you should go for love marriage you know arranged marriage is bad arranged marriage is boring it's old because people don't know what actually marriage means and people don't actually know why the system of arranged marriage was there at all okay so anyways today's video is not on that but i will give some uh, queries uh, from the shrimad bhagavatam it is from the third canto 21st chapter okay and this which i am going to speak is the eighth verse uh, seventh verse yeah so third canto of the shimad bhagavatam 21st chapter seventh verse 3.21.7 so in this what happens is there is one of the great sages whose name is kardamba muni and kardamba muni is wanting to get married to somebody and then he does something amazing <laughs> so whenever we have some doubt in life this is what we should do we should always go to these scriptures and read the authorized texts and then from there we should try to understand the story and then the lessons all right otherwise there will be havoc in our life so let's see what is there so basically what happens is if i would give the background kardamba muni is the father of kapil muni and Kapil Muni is one of the expansions of Lord Vishnu, he is Vishnu himself. So this is the process by which Kapil Muni comes into this universe by being the son of uh, Kardamba Muni and Devahuti and beautiful this is. So what happens is Kardamba Muni wants to get married and then he goes to Lord Brahma. So let's start reading. So I will not read the shloka nor will I read the translation. I will, uh, I mean the purport, I will simply read the translation. All right. So now all your queries, should you go for arranged marriage, for love marriage or for dating, for this, for that will be answered in this. Okay. And yes, this will be a very heavy video. It can pinch the hearts of many people. So 
if you do not like what i speak in some of my videos then you should consider walking away from this video okay this video is not for you this video is only for those people who are interested to progress in their spiritual life if you are simply having mundane materialistic goals that you will get married you will enjoy each other physically then you will take a big room big home big car and then one day you perish then this video is not for you you will hate this video you will dislike this video you will blast me you will kill me maybe <laughs> okay so i'm warning before itself i will speak very heavy things here so later on do not tell me okay so 3.21.7 all right there you go during that period of penance so karda muni was doing penance and if you go bit before in the earlier shloka it also explains in 3.21.6 the great sage maitreya replied maitreya rishi is the one who is speaking all this to vidur in the bhagavatam commanded by lord brahma to beget children in the worlds the worship full karda muni practiced penance on the bank of the river saraswati for a period of 10000 years should i repeat 10000 years oh my god so basically what happens is in 3.21.6 the background is there that karda muni had gone to lord brahma and he, uh, he had asked that i want to get married and then lord brahma said go and do penance for 10000 years so let's see the story first then we will see the lessons all right the story is short it's not very big then 3.21.7 here the main story starts during that period of penance the sage kardamba by worship through devotional service in trance propitiated the personality of godhead who is the quick bestower of all blessings upon those who flee to him for protection so propitiated means uh, to please somebody so basically that's what he said here that uh, when he got the instruction from lord brahma that you must do penance for the next 10000 years he tried to uh, do whatever lord brahma had said and by that lord vishnu was very pleased and it's written uh, he propitiated the personality of godhead who is the quick bestower of blessings upon those who flee to him for protection that means if you run to lord vishnu for protection he will very happily give it to you then the next shloka then in the satya yuga the lotus eyed supreme personality of godhead being pleased showed himself to that kardamba muni and displayed his transcendental form which can be understood only through the vedas so then lord vishnu was so pleased that he appeared in front of kardamba muni kardamuni saw the supreme personality of godhead who is free from material contamination in his eternal form effulgent like the sun wearing a garland of white lotuses and water lilies wow beautiful description it is what does god wear question number 1 <laughs> surprise test the lord was clad in spotless yellow silk and his lotus face was fringed with silk dark locks of curly hair should i repeat the lord was clad in spotless yellow silk oh my god yellow silk question number 2 <laughs> what does the lord wear his lotus face was fringed with slick dark locks of curly hair yes curly hair you see wow <laughs> adorned with a crown and earrings crown and earrings question number 3 <laughs> he held his characteristic conch conch is the shank which he plays always disc disc is the sudarshan chakra which he has mace mace is the gada which he has in the in three of his hands and a white lily in the fourth so lord vishnu has four hands so in one of them he has the conch then the disc then the mace and then in one of the hands he has the white lily lily is a flower you know he glanced about in a happy smiling mood whose sight captivates the hearts of all devotees so question number 5 what did lord vishnu do <laughs> so if you are attentive maybe you can write the answers in the comments okay then a golden streak on his chest the famous kaustubha gem suspended from his neck kaustub money is there in his heart he stood in the air with his lotus feet placed on the shoulders of garuda question number next 7 8 9 10 so many questions i got 
so what's the name of the gem which is there in the chest of lord vishnu then when karda muni actually realized the supreme personality of godhead in person he was greatly satisfied because his transcendental desire was fulfilled because he wanted to see lord vishnu he fell on the ground with his head bowed to offer obeisances unto the lotus feet of the lord his heart naturally full of love with folded hands he satisfied the lord with his prayers so he started he started chanting prayers in glorification of god the great sage kardambhumi said, said rishir uvacha o supreme worshipful lord my power of sight is now fulfilled having attained the greatest perfection of the sight of you who are the reservoir of all existences though many suck through many successive births of deep meditation advanced yogis aspire to see your transcendental form next question <laughs> Your lotus feet are the true vessel to take one across the ocean of mundane nations. Only persons deprived of their intelligence by the spell of the deluding energy will worship those feet with a view to attain the trivial and momentary pleasures of the senses which even persons rotting in hell can attain. However, my lord, you are so kind that you bestow mercy even up to them. So basically he's saying here that when somebody is foolish, he will go to you and ask you materialistic boons. Yes, dhanam janam sundarim. Dhanam is money, janam is uh, big birth in a big family and sundarim is uh, good looking members of the opposite sex. Why why he saying that they are foolish? Because these things will anyways perish. so instead he should ask you directly not all these things and he's saying even uh, the, these pleasures are available even for those who are rotting in hell and then he's saying you are so kind that you also bestow your mercy even to them that means even if you ask materialistic things to lord vishnu he will also fulfill them because he is very kind now comes the story therefore desiring to marry a girl of like disposition who may prove to be a veritable cow of plenty in my married life to satisfy my lustful desire i too have sought the shelter of your lotus feet which are the source of everything for you are like a desire tree so now kardamuni is telling that because i want to marry a girl of like disposition okay the word used here is swajatiya who may prove to be a veritable cow of plenty in my married life veritable cow means one who improves your life after getting married yes that's the meaning of a veritable cow because the cow gives milk to satisfy my lustful desire i too have sought sought the shelter of your lotus feet so basically he is saying that i want to marry i have a desire to enjoy so because of that i have approached you and uh, i request you to give me a girl basically that uh, that's what he's telling i have sought the shelter of your lotus feet which are the source of everything source of everything you see <laughs> for you are like a desire tree kalpa vriksha desire tree means you go and ask anything that is fulfilled then oh my lord you are the master and leader of all living entities under your direction all conditioned souls as if bound by rope are constantly engaged in satisfying their desires following them o embodiment of religion i also bear oblations for you who are eternal time so then the next shloka is however persons who have given up stereotyped worldly affairs and the the beastly followers of these affairs and who have taken shelter of the umbrella of your lotus feet by drinking the intoxicating nectar of your qualities and activities in discussions with one another can be freed from the primary necessities of the material body so basically it's said here that if we keep discussing about god and we spread the spiritual knowledge we can be freed from all the material miseries which are there okay and then the description of the uh there's a description you see your wheel this torsion chakra which has three naves rotates around the axis of the imperishable brahman it has 13 spokes 360 joints six rims and numberless leaves carved around it 
क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन थ्रू इट्स रेवोल्यूशन कट शॉर्ट द लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ द एंटायर क्रिएशन दिस व्हील ऑफ ट्रिमेंडस वेलोसिटी कैन नॉट टच द लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ द डिबोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड सो ही सेइंग बेसिकली दिस सुदर्शन चक्र इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एनिलेशन ऑफ द एंटायर यूनिवर्स दैट्स वॉट इज सेड हियर कैटेगोरिकली एंड देन दे आर सेइंग दैट बट दिस कैन नॉट टच द डिबोटीज ऑफ गॉड दैट मीन्स इफ समबडी इज स्पिरिचुअली एलिवेटेड एंड कनेक्टेड टू गॉड देन ही डजेंट डाई एक्चुअली His only material body perishes. That's what happens. My dear Lord, you alone create the universes. O personality of Godhead, desiring to create these universes, you create them, maintain them, and then again wind up them by your energies, which are under the control of your second energy, Yoga Maya. Just as a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up. So basically, Yoga Maya is the potency of god which creates this entire universe and this illusion we will discuss about this uh, yoga maya later and he said just like a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up okay so this is very long and then let us go directly to what lord vishnu said okay shri bhagavan vacha 3.21.23 i have skipped the prayers the supreme lord said having come to know what was in your mind i have already arranged for that for which you have worshiped me through your mental and sensory discipline so lord vishnu is telling i already know what you want so i have already arranged <laughs> then what has he arranged let's see that the lord continued my dear rishi o leader of the living entities for those who serve me in devotion by worshiping me especially persons like you who have given up everything unto me there is never any question of frustration wow the emperor swayambhu manu the son of lord brahma who is well known for his righteous acts has his seat in brahma varta and rules over the earth with its seven oceans so he is giving description of swayambhu manu because swayambhu manu is the father of devahuti who is the girl who is supposed to get married the day after tomorrow o brahmana that celebrated emperor who is that emperor swayambhu manu from the word manu comes the word manushya that celebrated emperor who is expert in religious activities will come here with his queen shatarupa wishing to see you question number 11 who is the wife of swayambhu manu <laughs> He has a grown-up daughter whose eyes are black. She is ready for marriage, and she has good character and all good qualities. She is also searching for a good husband. <laughs> My dear sir, her parents will come to see you, who are exactly suitable for her, just to deliver their daughter as your wife. That princess, O oh holy sage, will be just the type you have been thinking of in your heart for all these long years. She will soon be yours and serve you to your heart's content. My God, it's like he's thinking of a soulmate these days, as they say, and exactly the soulmate appears. My God, this is insane. Then Lord Vishnu is saying, she will bring forth nine daughters, and from the seed. sown in her by you and through the daughters you beget the sages will duly beget children so then the world will be progenited uh, there will be a population in this world with your heart cleansed by properly carrying out my command re- re- resigning to me the fruits of all your acts you will finally attain me all right showing compassion to all living entities you will attain self realization giving assurance to safety of of safety to all you will perceive your own self as well as the universe universes in me and myself in you wow o great sage i shall manifest my own plenary portion through your wife devahuti along with your nine daughters and i shall instruct her in the system of philosophy that deals with the ultimate principles or categories so basically he is saying that i will take birth in the womb of devahuti and then kapil muni also instructs uh, devahuti his son is instructing his mother you see wonderful it is maitreya rishi said thus 
having spoken to karadamuni the lord who reveals himself only to the senses departed from that lake called bindu sarovar which was encircled by the river saraswati all right so then what happens is karadamuni is waiting there and then day after tomorrow swayam bhuman who comes and says that oh please uh, marry my daughter because lord vishnu said that you are interested to marry and that is what is been planned by the lord so the lesson here is instead of going and asking to relatives for marriage instead of going on dating people in- instead of going on asking our friends or instead of going on finding ourselves in this world instead of going and asking any random stranger oh will you marry me <laughs> instead of doing all these things let us focus on our spiritual life so when we focus on our spiritual life the by product is that we get a spouse with whom our spiritual journey is carried our spiritual life improves one of the symptoms of a happy married life is if your spiritual life has improved before marriage yes after marriage i mean then it was before your marriage or you are only becoming more and more materialistic which happens with most of the people that that is the reason they are not happy so if we want that we be happy in this world we have to have connection with god otherwise it's not possible we will be hovering around in this mental uh, plane as the bhagavatam says na mano rathe na sati dhavato bahi so when we do that we be frustrated because every time we will see that somebody else is having something which we don't have somebody has a big mansion you might have just a small flat you might have a maruti suzuki somebody might have a mercedes and then you will also have these desires i want this 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 so it is very important that when we are choosing uh, the spouse we see that the spouse will be able to inculcate the spiritual practices which we have also in his or her life all right but for that there's a prerequisite we should have spiritual practices if we are only not having then there's uh, there's no point in marrying such a girl or a boy okay so the first thing that we need to do is lord brahma said that go and do penance for 10000 years now the, if we don't live for 10000 years but instead of searching for the opposite sex let us pray to lord vishnu and when we do spiritual activities then he himself will send it don't worry he will come from somewhere she will appear as in hindi they say na zameen phaad ke niklega na the earth will blast and he will pop out from somewhere now somebody will say oh these are all imaginary stories you are cooking up it doesn't work like that you have to go on dating you have to you have to pursue the opposite sex you have to do this you have to do that no nothing is required that doesn't mean you do not search i am not saying you sit in your home and you uh, you will find uh, somebody and that person will come from the air i am not saying that you do the necessary search which is required but that is secondary the problem is people are only doing that i get mails messages whatsapp calls so many things that oh i am not f- able to find somebody well why are you finding <laughs> instead you go to that source who is the one who decides who to get who and who gets whom and uh, what happens so when we go and pray to lord vishnu not for a spouse that is very important we should pray to him that we obtain spiritual elevation and for that it is essential that we also get married to a person who also is elevated spiritually at least to some extent and at least connected if not elevated so then we can also practice our spiritual life together with that person and that's the meaning of the word vivaha vivaha means a vahan to go towards lord vishnu that is the meaning of the word vivaha so when we do that then automatically god will bless us with a spouse with whom our spiritual journey gets carried on very well very beautifully now externally your marriage may be good it may be bad you may have happiness you may not have that will depend on your karma that nobody can change but when we pray to god for our spiritual progress then it is irrespective of our karma all right then god will definitely bless us with somebody with whom we can carry on the spiritual journey together all right so that is it from my side so instead of going on searching and hopping from one person to the other just pray to lord vishnu do spiritual practices do the mantras as soon as you get up 
maintain a good lifestyle have a vegetarian diet take prasad and then in the weekends go and associate with the holy people who are there in your uh, place go to some spiritual center or some retreat and whenever you get time go to holy places like kanchipuram like badrinath so many places are there dwarka is there jagannath puri is there <laughs> and then read scriptures like the bhagavatam read scriptures like the gita and then by that you develop your consciousness by which you will be able to attract a person specifically which, who is good for your spiritual life all right and this is true for both men and for both women and many ladies had been requesting me that uh, how to choose a husband so that video will be coming very soon i hope uh, maybe tomorrow or day after i don't know or maybe next week i'll try my best to do it by next week if not tomorrow or day after okay so there you go if you're new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please go to my website you'll find the link of the website in the description of this video below okay until next time wish you good luck with finding the right person <laughs> okay bye bye see you